Welcome back to Stories in Time from Home. Uh, my name's Eloise Schottler. I'm a storyteller. I have a couple of stories that came together just out of the blue last night, and I decided to redo what I was going to tell you because I liked what I had just gotten hold of. I hope you'll enjoy it too. How's it going? There have been a lot of different things happening, people getting together safely. Uh, weather has been sort of on and off, hard to tell, but we're still doing okay. I hope you're doing okay. That's the major thing. Well, yesterday I was thinking about a particular story and then I received an email. An email that I didn't expect that was a surprise opened up my emails last night and it was from a girl who's now a woman that I grew up with in North Carolina. Uh, she and I met, uh, as little girls do, at Elizabeth Elementary School in Charlotte. And so we were in that school for quite a while, that's six grades in there. And then we went all the way, Piedmont Junior High School and Central High School, which is where we graduated from um, high school. Well, I mean, if within a second, it brought back so many memories. And then she told me some things that I want to tell you about. Now, in her email, she, of course, reminded me that I had mentioned my grandmother lived on 7th Street and she had been by that house and to that house because she lived on 5th Street, of course. Of course I remembered that. Of course I remembered her and that neighborhood and her questioning me about it just made it that much more vivid for me. So then I want to tell you what she told me, but I'm going to read it to you because I want you to have her words and then we can talk about it. I looked over the mail a little bit and then I decided this about I wanted to read it. I love the Southern voices. I hope you like them. It just brings up so many memories, you know, uh, when you've got Southern voices behind you. Here's what she told me. We live in, cul -de -sac of, in a cul-de-sac of five houses now. We've started bringing our chairs out about five o'clock every Friday afternoon, sitting them in a circle, the appropriate space apart. The first time, and that was several weeks ago, my husband made homemade ice cream brought it out. Now we meet neighbors who are walking by. They stop by and visit. Some close nearby folks bring their chairs to sit with us. Last week, a neighbor brought some wonderful sweet breads to eat. My only complaint is that no one wants to leave this group. No one wants to go back into the quarantine. Last week, after two hours and three quarters minutes, I went inside to fix dinner, Eloise. Several were still out there after we had eaten. That just tells you how much fun we were having, how nice it would be out on the yard. We all enjoy this connection and look forward to it each week. Well, she closed off then and she said she had seen the story that I had told last week, which was about having my family over on the deck and talking about it, and that had been the first time this that she's talking about is the third or fourth time that she's gathered those people in her neighborhood. I think being in a cul-de-sac made it so much better. Uh, no traffic, really, to bother them. And I felt wonderful. I mean, a North Carolina woman whose name is Thorny 
had suggested to me that I could have a meeting with my family sitting out on some grass, you know, in the ruling way, separated to be safe, that that would be okay. And I had done it and had loved it. And so that now I told that story that didn't remind her to do it. She was already doing it, but it connected us again. I hadn't talked to her in it must have been 30 years. And it was so nice. And when she mentioned my grandmother's house and that she knew where it was, I mean, I'm a sentimental person. There's just no getting around it. And I love be connecting, being connected with people, being reminded, bringing those memories right up. Well, she told me in there that they had moved to Fort Mill, South Carolina. Of course, they were originally living in Charlotte, but now they're living in Fort Mill. Ha ha, ha ha. I listened to that, I looked at that, I thought about that and I started laughing. And I said, that is too funny. I'm studying Fort Mill. I've been there a number of times over time. So it was a small town. It was a little town. It became a bigger town and a bigger town. And I don't know how big it is now, but it's a very attractive place to be. And she lives down there. Why am I studying it? Because I'm trying to learn the parts of the story of my great great grandparents who lived there well yes and so i decided i would just tell her the story in this because i i imagine she'll check this out my great great grandparents are dr benjamin morris cobb who grew up part mostly, came down from Massachusetts with his relatives, his father, mother, all that sort of stuff. And they built a business. They were blacksmiths in Newton, North Carolina. And he went to medical school, Jefferson Medical School over in Philadelphia. You only have to, had to go about one year to get everything really fixed up before you could have your diploma to practice as a doctor on your own. And at that time, they had people that guided them who already had their practice going and were, you know, uh, certified. Okay, so they came. Well, in 1830 something, a whole group of Irish came down that same way because they'd heard of a gold strike in that area. They'd been up in uh, New York, but then they decided to come down here and check into that. And among those, a one family brought all of them, all their brothers and their sisters and their parents, and they had a big group. And one of those was a young woman whose name was Catherine Lonigan. Catherine Ann Lonigan. And guess it, they were all Catholic. Now, there are very few Catholics down there, and we don't have to discuss this. It's just their, you know, their, how they stood and who they were. And they had come over from Tipperary, Ireland, by boat, of course. Well, eventually, Dr. Cobb noticed this very pretty young woman who was known for being just a laugh, laughing and singing and happy. And before things went too far, he married her. And they began to have children in Newton. But there wasn't enough real business for him as a doctor to stay in Newton. So he transferred to Fort Mill, South Carolina, not that far away. Not that far away. I'd be surprised if it had been two years, two hours. I don't know. So they lived down there. Now he was now, when they got down there, they had about five children. And so they ended up with six or seven. I can never remember exactly because I'm 
telling the story of John Walter Cobb, who is my great great grandfather, who or my great grandfather, who's up above, closer to the top of the range of the kids. Well, unfortunately, they were very happy. I think they were very happy together just by some things I picked up. I haven't seen a picture of him and that makes me a little sad. I've seen a picture of her and I'm looking hard. I just have a fantasy that he's gonna be a really big, good looking man. Um, anyway, when he was 46, he had an accident. He was in that area down in Fort Mill where he was assigned to a circuit and he had to ride his horse around to make that circuit to take care of patients or he would ride over if there was an emergency or whatever. And he fell, hurt himself very badly. And the night that he was brought home, they got him in bed and the next night he looked at her and said, I'm going to die tonight, Catherine. Well, he did. Well, he was the doctor and he diagnosed it and it was complete. She had six children now and she was about 40. And so what did she do? A very sensible thing. She packed up her children and went to Charlotte so she'd be near family to help her with those boys and girls. Now, one of the people that was with that group of youngsters was my great grandfather, John Walter Cobb Sr. And he was a very, very go-getter kind of a person. And he was liked by people. And so he earned money. I don't know all of the jobs that he did, but he was willing to do anything that would bring money in for his mom. And so he helped out with that. And then he built his education. And he turned out to be, after a while, so popular in Charlotte that he was frequently reelected as the Register of Deeds for the county of Mecklenburg County. And I grew up knowing that that was his signature, a very attractive signature, obviously taught by nuns. And so he had that and he was a magistrate. My father told me really funny stories about him. Some really great ones that I tell, but not in this bunch. And um, I wish I could have met him. And I wish I could have known his one of his sons, John Walter Cobb Jr. Because he was, he died in France. And how funny for today. How funny for today. He's buried in France and he's a victim of Spanish flu. Thank you so much for listening. I hope somebody will hand me another story by the next time I come. Thank you.